Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs project. This time it's the pot holder. Now it's a pot holder, but it's going to be a bunch of other things too. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to use this. We're going to make the typical pot holder first, and then I'll show you some other projects. So this has the no slip material on the back. It's my new gray stuff. This grabs. No slipping, no kidding. So when you go to cut your fabric, you're going to get exactly the same curve here as you are here, as you are here, as you are here. So no having to move and trace and hope that your template will give you what you need it to do, give. This will do it for you. Okay, so I'm going to show my um, behind the scenes stuff, pot holders. This is a pot holder that I had to dig through a drawer pretty deeply, but this is a pot holder. You can see it's falling apart. This, this with the pocket, dirty. These guys, you can see how much they've shrunk. Those are the things that you may have hiding in your closet or in your cabinets too. I don't want you to use those. I want you to make some pot holders that you might not be embarrassed about. At least if you have friends over or company or somebody else that's gonna be coming over too. And they make great gifts. And they're also great items to sell too. You can combine them with the microwave bowl cozies or with some other fun project. A pot holder goes really well with a trivet or with a hot plate, same template can be made to uh, use to make those too. So these are great gifts, not only to give, but to sell too. So this guy here basically has the pocket so I can put my hand inside of there and grab. So this one here, this one here, if you give it as a gift, go ahead and stick something in. I've got some coffee pumpkin spice that goes in here. You can add a little stir or a little whatever it is. So if you're gonna give these as gifts, that makes a nice little thing to do. Stirs, spoons, whatever it is that you wanna do. But it's it's the traditional pot holder where we're basically taking our layers of fabric and putting a binding around. You can do wrong sides uh, together, put the binding around as we'll be doing in a minute, or you can do right sides together and stitch it. And this isn't a pot holder, but you get the idea. That's basically how it would look. This is a project that Darla made, and you can see there's a zipper and a zipper and a zipper. This just sectioned off, so I should say a zipper, but a pocket and a pocket and a pocket, a big pocket that goes all the way down and a snap for your rings or any necklaces that you don't want to get twisted up. And it's a great travel case for your jewelry. And that was made from the pot holder template. Isn't that cool? So you can tie that up, put whatever goodies that are in there. So this though, if you did make it as a pot holder, forget the zippers and just do a pot holder, you could do right sides together and finish with the edges just doing a top stitch. I'm gonna show you the traditional method and we're not gonna go all the way through the steps because most of you will know the process. What do we need? We need two fabrics for the pocket. I'm gonna show you how we'll use the template markings that are here. Here. Use a Sharpie to go ahead and color those markings. You can draw all the way across if you want to. Use the Sharpie to go in and write down what this is. It's already engraved like the Winter Designs is up here. It's just hard to see. So I don't need you to color this in. Hey, it'd be nice, but I don't need you to waste your ink on that. We want to color in the name of the template. So this is the pot holder. So this from here down, that's going to be our pocket. I'll show you how we use the template for that. So we need a layer of fabric, a layer layer of fabric and then something inside. We'll talk about the something inside in a minute. Another piece of fabric and another piece of fabric that's the whole size of this template. And then the inside stuff. So inside, batting comes in different widths, different um, weights, different uh, types of materials. I like to use 100% cotton, partly because I have so much, but also because if I am gonna be doing something in the microwave, I know that that batting is always gonna be safe. So choose one piece of batting. If you want to put a piece of batting inside of here, you can do that. I'll show you a couple options, but for sure we want to have a piece of batting inside of here. What else do we want to have in there? We want some Insulbrite. Now, Insulbrite is a brand. It's a, a piece that you know is, is manufactured, and there are really two different types that are re really common on the market. You can see the silver metallic here versus here you don't see it. Here you can see there's a little bit of silver to it. So this basically is what we see right here. 
and this is this. I think they both work equally well. It's whatever you can find. I have this on my website, so you know it's just whatever it is you like to use. I always save my scraps, and I always save my pieces that are stained. Why? They're not gonna show, but do you see how there's a stain there? Who knows what that was? It might have been that the iron touched it for too long. You shouldn't put this under the iron anyway, but this is going to help with the heat. I have people all the time ask, when I make whatever for the oven, which side goes down? And what I've been told is that the side with the metallic, the side with the metallic, that needs to go down to where the heat is. So have I tested it out? I haven't made one and tested one versus another. So you can do that if you want. And if you know any more information and you wanna share it, go ahead and write it down in the comments. So a piece of this Insel Bright or the piece that has the metallic, a piece of batting, and this is a little bit lighter weight batting than this is. I've got some really heavy weight batting. What's great about that, or even doing two layers of this, is it's gonna give you more protection. But what's bad about that is when you start stacking up all of your layers, that's a lot for you to sew through, especially when you're doing your bindings. If you notice here, I haven't sewn this down. I left this open because I wanna show you a, a cheater method that's on the back. But when you're stitching through all these layers, it's pretty hard to stitch through all of that bulk on your typical you know, home sewing machine. If you have an industrial, pff, no big deal. Then you're gonna go for whatever it is that you want. But honestly, I think one layer of this, one layer of your batting, whichever batting you wanna use, and then your fabrics would work just fine. All right, so in the pocket, I talked about you can use a piece of batting if you want to. Another thing I like to use, and because I have a lot of pieces left over, the little pieces, this guy here, this is fusible, but it's a lightweight fleece. And this is Pellon, a lightweight fleece. And I sell this on my website too, because I just love it. It gives you a little bit of uh, support and stability, but it doesn't really give you too much weight and it doesn't crinkle or, reese, or crease when you're uh, working with it too much. So this inside is another option for inside of here. So you can use this, you can use this. You could even use an SF-101 if you wanted to do that. The SF-101 is a very lightweight um, interfacing. So it's up to you. Okay, so let me get these out of the way and let's take a look at one of the ways that we're gonna use the template to cut. So I have got here my pocket fabric, my pocket fabric and that piece of batting. So you can see those layers here. We're gonna put that aside for a minute. That's gonna be my pocket. And then the back side, which is this, the fabric that I choose here is gonna be the fabric that's showing. So if this is gonna be my pocket, I don't really wanna do potato fabric here too. So I'm gonna choose this look here. That's gonna be the pocket and that's gonna be here this material here. And if you want to do some auditioning with this, go ahead and just do what I'm doing here. Grab your fabric and you notice I've just cut these pieces a little bit larger than the pot holder. This guy here, you'll notice this is basically right on. We're gonna be cutting from here. So this is all the material that we need, but I've got a piece there. So choose what it is you want by auditioning. So you can see that fabric. You could choose whatever. And remember, this is going to show, this is where your hand's gonna be. So if you're going to be doing things that are really messy or dirty, then maybe a busy fabric or a darker fabric that's not going to show some of the, you know, cake batter and those kinds of things. You know, think about that if you're really going to be making these and using these. Same thing with what's inside. You can also get a piece of fabric a, a little bit larger than this, basically from here down doubled, and you can put a fold there. It really doesn't matter because we're going to put binding I like a binding, you don't have to. You could do the fold and just do a top stitch if you wanted to do that. I think the binding just adds a nice touch to have some uniformity and I think it gives it a little bit more stability. But if you did have a scrap of fabric that was basically this length times two, plus maybe a little bit more for your cutting, then you can fold that over. I've chosen to use this fabric here on the inside. So basically when you're looking at this, we're gonna see this on here and inside here it's the same fabric. So you choose. What do I have on the back of this? I have the potato bag again. You could use a different fabric if you wanted to. Okay, so for the piece here that's the full size of the template, I have this 
for the fabric that we're going to be seeing. Then I have my batting. Then I have my insole bright. And you can see there's a little bit of metallic sheen to that. So that's face down. And then I have my fabric. All right, I've got a lot of fabric here. When I place the template on top, if you have the 60 millimeter rotary cutter, go ahead and grab it. I'm going to use a 45 millimeter and I want to show you how to cut with a 45 millimeter and just make sure that you understand when you're cutting around the curves and all those kinds of things, when you've got this much fabric, I've got a lot of fabric. It has no problem cutting it, but do you see right there that little bit of a peak of the fabric? It's not quite so sharp. You can see, let's see if I can get it to where you can see. There's a little piece of fabric that's showing. It just didn't cut all those layers. So I can really press down and angle that and cut some of that off. Guess what? It's going to be in the seam allowance or in the binding, really, so it doesn't matter that much. And there, that's a good big one. Do you see how when I go right here, I'm able to cut that off? But all of these layers got a lot of bulk there. And the 45 millimeter rotary cutter was just not made to cut that much stuff. So push down hard. Or when you cut, just know you'll want to go back and trim up either with your rotary cutter or with your scissors. So either way you go. And if you're cutting, you can cut off like I'm doing here. And see how I'm going to cut at an angle to get that? You can cut off. Or you can go ahead and move the template as you go and just cut around. So the little bit of, like dog ears, kind of, you know, those are ones that you're going to want to trim up. If you have the 60 millimeter, you're not going to have that issue because the 60 millimeter is meant to do all of these layers. So again, just be aware with the 45 millimeter, it can do it, but you're just going to have to work at trimming all those little pieces. So again, we're we're cutting through a whole lot of fabric. All right, let's get rid of all of this stuff. I've done my back layers, my inside layers. Take a look. Do you see how it's just not so pretty? I don't care because that's going to be left in my seam allowance. So that's not that big of a deal. Now, here's the other thing, too. What I just did, you really don't have to do. What we could have done was cut this one piece. And let's go to this. And let's imagine that I have batting, insole bright, and my potato bag fabric. And all of those are stacked so that this right here, do you see how I don't really have enough fabric and I don't have enough fabric? Well, let's get this out of here. We don't need that in there. All right, so we've got insole bright, we've got our batting, and they're all lined up nice and pretty like mine aren't. And when I place this on top here, do you see how I could use this and stitch around and stitch those layers together? You don't have to cut. If you're not comfortable with the rotary cutter, then you can stitch around and then you can cut afterwards with your rotary cutter freehand or with your scissors. So you don't have to do what I just did. All right, let's get that back together again. All right, so I've got my back. I've got my insole bright. Let's get our batting. And then we're going to take our piece of fabric that is going to show, this piece is going to show from the front. All right. So we're going to put all of that aside. Now we're going to take our pocket fabric. So I've got my fabric that's the top of this, this area here. I've got that. I've got my batting. And then I've got my inside, my lining. And we're basically going to line all of these up. Now, if you haven't squared this off yet, then we want to make sure to square all of these off so they're nice and even. Let's take a look at what we have. I have fabric that's wider than my template. I'm cutting from here to here. What I want to be able to do is score this or cut this so this is nice and straight. And then when I place my template on what I've just cut, I'm going to cut out that excess. So I'm going to take one of my rulers. You can use any straight ruler that you have. And what we want to do is line this up with the edge. Make sure that's lined up with the edge because I want to make sure when I put the template down that this is lined up. And you can see how this is a little bit crooked. I'm okay with that. And on camera, it doesn't look crooked. Here to my eye, that looks a little bit more crooked. But I'm going to square this up. I'm looking at, I'm going to go to my blue, which is the navy. That's my half inch marking. And I'm going to make sure again that this is still lined up straight. And we're squaring this off up top here. Let's get the 45 millimeter rotary cutter. We'll cut that off. 
And now when I place my template on top, we're going to take this line right here and this line, and I'm basically lining that up so it lines up with my fabric. So that's lined up with the edge of my fabric, that's lined up with the edge of my fabric, and now I have all this excess. You don't need to cut this piece of fabric nearly as big as I did, but I wanted you to see how much fabric you needed. Now I'm going to go back in and clean that up a little bit, and we're continuing to turn. So you can see it's a little bit easier for me to cut this amount of fabric that I have here than what I was just cutting before. The 45 millimeter rotary cutter is meant to do oh, 10 layers, 12 layers, 20 layers you can do, but I like to cut, if it's cotton fabric, about eight layers typically. All right, what do we have? We've got this and we've got this. So I'm gonna move from here to the next one that I have because I wanna show you the next step. You could have, instead of dealing with all of this bulk, look at all of that weight, you could have taken all of those things and just done some stitching. All I did was just do quick stitches along my lines that I have here basically, but you could go in and do free motion quilting on your fabrics before you cut that. What is that gonna do? It's still gonna give me all of the heat protection, but it's gonna cut down on all of that bulk. You can see how much I have here. That's gonna protect my hands, but it's also gonna make it hard to sew at the sewing machine versus this here. See the difference? That's huge. So if you wanna take the time to do free motion quilting, it's a great time to practice some of your stitches or just to do whatever it is at your sewing machine. If you've got fabric that has a pattern that you can follow, easy enough to do. So to get from here, from here to here, if you wanted to do that, I certainly wouldn't do my stitching here, but what I would do is go to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around my edges. Now remember, we're gonna have binding on here, so your binding, I'm gonna grab my black binding, and let's look to see how far in that binding's gonna go. So I don't have to stitch right along on the edge. Do you see? I've got all of that, and you can see how close I am to the edge. I actually could stitch right about to here. So I'm not gonna go way over here because if I don't have my fabric nice and tight in the binding, which sometimes happens, then those stitches might show. I can go back and pick those out later, but it's one more thing that I don't wanna to have to do. All right, so what would we do here? We would stitch all the way around that piece. I'm gonna get rid of that. And we would stitch all the way around this piece too. So let's take a look at this piece. This piece is basically this piece that I have here. But what did I do? I took a tea towel, which I love doing, and I fussy cut, basically, you know, with my tea towel using the template. Do I have a fussy cut for this? Nope. Do you want one? If so, let me know, and I'll make a fussy cut for it. The fussy cut basically just lets you figure out where you want your fabric, but it's easy enough when you're looking at a tea towel to be able to figure that out. I'm going to grab a tea towel that I have over here. Oh, snap. This is huge. This is way too big. But do you see how basically I would be able to take a look at that? We're going from here over to here, so I can place this down below, and I basically can look and see and feel. Okay, I can feel the edge here, feel the edge here, and I'm looking to see that right there where my fingernail is, right here, that's the top, then over here, there's my fingernail there. So my O is not gonna get in. So I could basically pull this down and I could take a, um, a marker, a chalk marker, and just kind of trace around. So it's easy enough to be able to do that. You can also take the template and put it on top of an acrylic and trace around and cut out and make your own fussy cut. If you are gonna do a lot of fussy cutting like I have here, then definitely let me know and I'll make a fussy cut frame for you. The dumplings, that's one that I had requests for. So I have the dumpling fussy cuts and we'll be filming that too so you can see how to use those. But these tea towels to me are so much fun, especially for the kitchen or if you have dogs or cats or whatever that you love so much. All right, so what are we doing to, where are my fabrics? Here. All right, so what are we gonna be doing here? We're going to be placing our binding right in here. And I like to do a zigzag or a decorative stitch. Go ahead and press the binding out so that you don't have those little creases in here. Also, your binding will have joins along the way somewhere. So make sure in this area that you don't have any of those joins there. 
And you've got a couple options. If you're feeling pretty confident, then you can place this right inside here and clip, clip, clip all those clips or pin, 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 or you can use the tape. I didn't use the tape on this part, but I definitely used the tape on doing the binding around the sides just because to me it's harder to do. So we're going to place this inside and you're going to do a decorative stitch or a zigzag. Once you do that, then we can place this right on top. And then what are you going to do? You're going to go to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch these together. And again, use your clips or use your um, pins, whichever way you want to do it. Now you've got a couple ways that you can do the binding. You can do, well, I shouldn't say a couple, there's a billion ways to do bindings. But as far as putting bindings on and hanging your binding, if or hanging your pot holder, we can put the binding around and not have a hanger. That's what I've done here. I don't have any hangers on here. Same thing on here, I don't have a hanger on here. But you could start at the top and give yourself basically a loop that that's where you're going to be doing this. So cut the loop that you want or leave that much fabric dangling for you to do that and then start right up here. The other cool trend that I've been seeing a lot of is taking leather pieces, this is just a faux leather, but imagine you actually have a leather piece and when this is finished, let's come back over to this one, you can sew this right on top here or add a rivet. If you got one of those great um, press tools, then you can add a rivet here. And that's one of those cool trends that I've been seeing a lot of. And they already sell these guys done for you in the right lengths with the rivet ready to go. You know, the rivet pieces that you have and the holes already punched. You know, if you're gonna do it yourself, then you've gotta have the hole punch for the leather. There's a whole but much more involved. This faux leather, if you like the idea of it, you don't wanna do the rivet, you can just stitch back and forth. Use a heavier weight thread and stitch back and forth, and then that gives you that cool loop. So I think that's kind of a neat look to do. I'm not going to be adding any of these because I don't hang mine. They're in my drawers. So I like to start right here at the bottom. So stitch all of this together. And then instead of placing this inside, because I'm not confident with my binding on curves skills, give me something straight to bind and I have no problem doing it. But here, what we would do is open this up and the traditional method, you know, basically is we're gonna be using this here. And I actually wanna go on the other end. I want that thinner side on top. And we're gonna be placing this on and you can, if you're confident, you leave yourself a tail here and you're gonna start stitching here and you can stitch all the way around and do that. Or you can do what I did and use peel off tape. The peel off tape to me is just, it makes your life a lot easier. It just really makes your life a lot easier. So on the front, I used peel off tape. On the back, I used peel off tape. Let's go peek inside of here. Can you see the peel off tape that I have here? I pressed down everywhere else here. This, I used my stiletto to press that really well. And you noticed I cut a piece. And then here I cut some smaller pieces so you can really kind of get into those curves. I don't have to cover every single centimeter of that, but we're gonna just use the stiletto or whatever tool you have to give a really good press. And if you've done a good job of pressing, you might be able to score with this. And do you see when I peel that off? I'm gonna go ahead and just press a little bit because I wanna get the rest of this off. And if you don't have the wooden stiletto, you can take whatever scissors or tweezers or whatever and just to start picking that off. But you get the idea and I'm gonna press a little bit more, but as I press, I'm not pressing that hard, I'm gonna flip over because one of the things I notice about the pot holders is the template is gonna give you a beautiful, exact left and right, top and bottom, but your binding, let me just mess this up so you can see what I mean. Do you see what I just did there? Now it looks really crooked, even though my fabric really is crooked here. And by the way, if you're new to doing these kinds of projects, don't use a fabric with a check or a plaid or a stripe or anything that you have to have exactly as. So those are the kinds of things that just makes it a whole lot harder. But do you see, I'm basically gonna look to see if that's 
going to make this consistent. And right down here, that's the side that I haven't pressed down yet. So when I go to press, I'm going to make sure that this comes. See how it's a little bit narrower there than here? It doesn't look it, but it's a little bit narrower. So I want to make sure that when I get those, I want them to be exactly the same. So peel off tape to me is the trick. Then when you're at the sewing machine, starting down here, you can stitch in the ditch if you want to, right along here. If you've done in the ditch, I'm not crazy about doing it in the ditch because I've got a little bit of a gap here and I may not have as much of a gap here and you're kind of, um, you know, taking your chances. So if you're gonna do any stitching, top stitch right along the edge or do that decorative stitch. And again, all of the weight of the project, if you Stitch those together, that's going to flatten it. If you're doing any quilting, that's going to flatten it. The other thing that's really great, too, is use your serger. This is a great serger project. You can serge all of this. You can serge all of these. You're not going to serge the bindings, of course, but at the beginning, those beginning steps, the serger is going to come in really handy. So what this allows you to do is get a really cool pot holder. I showed you the tea towel that has the cool thing, but you don't have to use a tea towel. You know, you can just use whatever it is. Match your kitchen, match your colors, match your themes. You know, if you have a Cricut machine then or a silhouette, then you can do some kind of a, you know, um, it, it's, hot and, it's getting hot in here or some kind of cool kitchen saying or whatever it is that you want to put on there. And it doesn't even have to be a solid material for you to use a Cricut and to have that show up. So that's the pot holder. Okay, I want to show you a couple other projects besides the pot holder because I think there are some fun ones to do. I already showed you this from Darla, this jewelry roll-up, which I think is really great. But she also made this. This is one of those zipper bags with the vinyl and you've got your fabric she chose a pre-quilted material you can go ahead and buy the pre-quilted material when it's on sale and it's a fabric I like I'm buying it if I ever have some extra money on me because I think it's you know one of those things you can always put to good use if we look at the template do you see how this fabric basically was the template she just folded it down but squared it off now one of the things you can do to make this happen is if you want this to be longer cut your fabric bigger and when you go to cut this, square this off first. Let's get this out of here. Square this off so this is nice and straight. Fold that down. And when you place this on the template and you go to cut, I'm not getting, and we want to when we do this, okay, if I'm telling you to square it off, let me show you. So we're pretending that that's squared off and I have this lined up here. I have this lined up here. I'm going to place this on the template wherever it is that I want. This line doesn't matter anymore, but when I go to cut around, I'm not getting the curve at the top. I'm keeping that straight. That's what happens here with that zipper. She did exactly the same size as the template and then just added the zipper in here and then did a binding around. Darla likes to make her own binding. That way she can fit it to the project. This is a lot lower in loft than the project I just showed you. So you don't need as wide of a binding. And if you did do a wider binding, then you wouldn't have as much space inside. If I can get my hand inside of there for the pocket. Now this is great for whatever, your medicines, your jewelry, your makeup treats, whatever kinds of things. If you're giving somebody gift cards or cash or whatever, this is great. Even just keeping your coins in here. And then, of course, all your sewing tools. You know, if you're taking a class or whatever and you want to have your tools to where you can see them. So I love projects like this. And notice the little tab right here. That tab so you can attach it to whatever it is that you want. So I think that's a great project. Here's another project, similar but different. She used the pet mesh. And she loves working with this pet mesh. It's easier to work with than the vinyl. You don't need a Teflon foot as much as you do here. And the Teflon foot, if you don't have one, you can put tape, the scotch tape or whatever, on the back of your uh, foot and then just cut into it so the needle has a place to go. But you can do the pet mesh or you could do the vinyl here if you wanted to. Same thing with this. You could do pet mesh on this. This is the template. And then she used 
This is upholstery fabric, and you can see she did pre-quilting there. She did the quilting rather than um, rather than the pre-quilted material. I should I should say that she did the quilting. I said pre-quilted, but she did the quilting here, and there's no quilting on here needed. But you can see how this is another cool project. What's really nice about this handle is you can put it wherever on the back of your backpack or your purse or your suitcase or hanging from whatever. So this again from that same template and. I love just the idea of these kinds of things. This is my favorite, I think, from Darla. These kind of came in like a, a, a nice tie. She made these in different sizes because I have other templates that make this. It's a little bit larger than this guy here. So she used some of my other templates to make larger sizes and to nest them. But look at this. I mean, isn't this amazing? If you've watched the video that I did on the different projects that Darla had made and my scissor holder video that we have, I showed the scissor holder that she made out of this fabric and then she did the Velcro. She had a project bag that she made with that. So if you haven't seen it, go look at it. But basically, we have this here, and we have this here, and then we have inside here. How cool is this? Now, this is the foam, and foam, if you haven't worked with foam, it's not a beginner project that we're looking at here. So I'm not going to have a video on this for you. Someday I'll talk Darla into coming. We're looking at dates right now and coming and maybe doing some videos. So this may be one that comes in the future. But if you think about it, we basically just got the same thing as the pot holder here. You've got your fabric that we're looking at. We've got our backing fabric and then we have whatever inside. She's used the fusible foam. And then this, instead of having the pocket here, she used the mesh. And this is that laundry or lingerie mesh, which is a lot of fun to work with. Did a binding on top of here, did a binding on here, and then added the zipper along the side, and then added a handle. I mean, is that just the coolest? Would that make a really great gift or what? And if you really wanted to make it a big deal, then add some tools inside of there, add a gift card to your favorite quilt shop or sewing shop or whatever, but that's made from this. But I wanna show you a project that I did and this is just another simple, quick project. And this is, when we look at this, the same thing. It's the template. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And it's the template, but I'm not using this at all. I used one of the tea towels, you had me at Wolf, and fussy cutting, having a fussy cut frame would certainly have made it a whole lot easier, but I was able to do it. And then I added two snaps, why? If I'm putting dog treats in here, if I'm putting doggy bags, whatever it is, some cash, some whatever, I don't really want just the snap here at the top and having that flop open, especially with the strap that I have on here. So basically, we're just gonna be cutting our fabrics front and back, so I have two fabrics here, and this could be a little girl's purse. And if I have this, these two fabrics, that's going to give me this here. Now I put SF-101 and SF-101, and I did a fusible fleece, the lightweight fusible fleece on here, just to give it a little bit more stability. So I've got those fabrics here, and then you can use whatever fabrics you want here an SF-101 here and the fusible fleece here as well. And then I just decided with the template how far down I wanted to go. I wanted to have more of the dogs showing and you can see these little doggies here and I wanted to still be able to read You Had Me at Wolf. And you can see from the side, there's all of this opening here. So it doesn't go all the way up. So it's easy to get into, to grab the treats or whatever it is. And then I added the little lanyard here. And the lanyards have been having a whole lot of fun with these. I have a lot of these here. I showed them in one of my videos, the scissor holder. And this one with the little doggy, I thought was really cute. These guys, the snaps are a whole lot of fun. These magnetic snaps, and they're easy to do as well. So I wanted to talk about this right here because the doggies, they're facing this way, heads up. Here, the heads up, the back of the doggies. So if I left that fabric with the doggies as it was, then these dogs wouldn't be facing down. They'd be facing up the wrong way. So what I did for this piece was I went ahead and cut a piece here with this. 
and cut it out. And then I cut another piece a little bit longer than what's here and I just stitched them together. And I just did kind of an eyeball placement to figure out where it was that I wanted. My sister is a schnauzer lover, schnauzer lover so I wanted to have the schnauzer not exactly centered because sometimes centered isn't really where you want it to be, just a little bit off center. But this is super simple to make with this template. And again, you can do it out of whatever fabrics. So it doesn't have to be for dog or kitty lovers. It can be for little kids. It can be whatever. So it's a fun one to do. You can do the lanyard on one side with the strap like that, or you could add this on the other side as well and do a cross body strap. One of these that I got from one of my cell phones. I love carrying my cell phone crossbody, but you could make this big enough to fit your cell phone in there. And imagine this clicked on here and this clipped on here. These are gold, that's silver. I don't like mixing my metals, so I'd make sure that I got some of the findings with gold instead, or you can make your own too. But these guys here, you can find these off of the purses that you have in your closet that you no longer use, you can find them at Goodwill for a dollar and it's cheaper to buy the purse and pull everything apart than it is for you to buy one of these straps. If you bought one of these straps online somewhere, you'd be paying a whole lot more for it. You can also buy belts and belts like this, you can see here, this wouldn't be a crossbody because it's a little girl's belt and it's not long enough for me, but look how adorable that would be as a purse. And again, you can use this right here to clip on here and have that clipped on here and add another one over here and make this a cute little crossbody. And it's just kind of like one of those things that you can have a whole lot of fun with. So there are a lot of different options for you. If you've got scraps from different projects that you've done, then you can do quilt as you go. You know, it just kind of goes on and on. I'm gonna show you some of the lanyards and some of the fixings that you can use. The magnetic snaps, they come in a male and a female. That's what we see here. This one that's the Audi and this one the, is the Innie and you need one of these for each. And on the one that I showed you, I had to use two each of the Audi and two each of the Innie. And this one goes with this, this one goes with that. So four of these. And then all of these guys, the dangles to hang off, I just, I love these. And there's just a thousand different choices that are out there, but I'm gonna put some of these on my website because I'm gonna do some doggy kits and some um, kitty kits for Valentine's Day that I think would be a whole lot of fun, but you can make yours up as well. They sell these here in all different sizes. You can see the different sizes that you have there. Even this, the size that you have here, you've gotta adjust your fabric, this fabric that you're gonna be creating for that width. So you wanna to look to see when you place this in here that this fits nicely here rather than way too wobbly. Now the stitching that I have here was the one that I used, but see how this is way too wobbly? So basically if we look at this width, we're wanting to have our fabric cut about four times this width, about four times this width, about four times this width. So whatever it is that you're making, you know, if you're gonna put this on, this is on a big purse, a big backpack, a big something, a duffel bag or whatever it is. So, you know, you want to be able to play around with the width of it. And if you're gonna use the fabric itself, then again, four times, but you can also buy strapping, webbing, those kinds of things. And they make these findings in all different finishes too. This is a gunmetal that I think looks really cool. If you want it to be you know, a more casual look, they even have these little plastic ones that clip on and off. So there's all kinds of options. All right, guys, so we did pot holders with the pot holder template, but we did a bunch of other things too. So head over to my website, winterdesigns.com. And when you get there, you're gonna click on products and templates. When you get to products and templates, it's pot holder, so you can say pot or you can go to holder, either way. And if you want to type in the whole word, the whole two words, you can, but you don't have to. Pot pincher, pot holder. My pot pincher, that's the little double handed um, oven mitt that's a whole lot of fun. Similar but different than the pot holder. The pot holder is meant to be the traditional pot holder. So you can get it right there. And it's funny because the pot holder template, I was shocked when I really started looking because people asked, why don't you make a pot holder template? And I thought, 
well, why don't we have a pot holder template? I have all these different ways for you to do pot holders and uh, pot pinchers and oven mitts and all kinds of things, but I hadn't come up with a pot holder, so it's about time. All right, guys, so I've got a couple hundred videos for you on my YouTube channel. If you're watching me now on YouTube, thank you so much. If you would subscribe, that would mean the world to me. Like, comment, share, ring the bell, all those things that help me be enthused and continue to offer more and more of these things for you. If you follow me on Facebook, it's winter designs uh, for sewing and quilting and I'll have a link in the description below so you can go right there I introduce new stuff on Facebook I tell you about discount codes that I have on Facebook sometimes you'll find discount codes in the written description so go back and watch some of my popular videos and maybe you'll find description of the actual discount code that I have going on at the moment so there's lots of information there thanks for watching again like comment share I'd appreciate it and we'll see you next time